Hi, I'm Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe's Video and Audio Tools, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the new features in After Effects CS6. Now, there's been a lot done to really improve the performance and experience inside the application, and the first feature that really deals directly with that, that is a true 64-bit performance revolution, is something called the Global Performance Cache. Now, Global Performance Cache is actually made up of three separate elements, a global RAM cache, a persistent disk cache, and a new graphics pipeline, but basically what it does is that it allows you to reuse previously cached frames without having to re-render. So if we take a look at the composition panel that we have down here, you'll see that we have the familiar green line. And if I go ahead and RAM preview this, you can see what this looks like. And again, it's playing in real time. Now, if I wanted to make a change to something like the levels effect that we have set here, I could come in here and just grab the midtones and make an adjustment. And then, of course, the green line goes away. So I would begin to re-RAM preview this. Now, previously, it would have to re-preview and recache all of the frames for all of the effects that have been applied. But now with Global Performance Cache, it's only recaching new frames for anything that was changed. So for instance, it's only recaching the frames on that level's effect, not everything else, which allows me to work that much more quickly. And you can see already we're back to real-time preview. Now if I don't like that, I can undo it. And again, previously, we'd have to recache and re-preview everything else again. Now when I undo, I still have my green bar because it's pulling those same cached frames from RAM no waiting around, no messing about. It's just there, allowing me to truly work as fast as I can think. Now, even cooler, what happens if I actually exit this project? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close the project here. Let's go ahead and purge all memory and reopen it. Because this is now going to showcase the persistent disk cache option that we have. So you'll notice now inside the composition panel we have a blue line. This is indicating that these frames have been located on disk, so now when I hit the space bar, it's pulling those from disk, putting them into RAM, allowing me to again play this back that much more quickly without having to wait for everything to re-render over and over again. It's truly a performance revolution, and it really changes the way you work inside the application. Now, the other element of this, of course, is the, um, the newer graphics pipeline. And essentially what this does, it's just better harnessing the OpenGL on your graphics card for faster interactivity, more responsiveness, especially when dealing with things like layers with graphical overlays, things that have bounding boxes or masks or motion tracker points, even interactions like making brush size adjustments. These are all accelerated, and it's really going to just change the way you work inside of that. After Effects. Now, in the previous version of After Effects, we introduced some new features dealing with 3D. Well, in CS6, we now have a new 3D camera tracker, which will automatically analyze motion present in 2D footage and automatically create a 3D camera and overlay 3D tracking points right on top of your 2D footage with a simple right-click operation. So if you take a look at the piece that we have here, once again, you'll see our global performance cache hard at work here with our blue and green line combination here. What I would like to do is actually parent something like some text or an object or a banner to the top of that car. Now to do that previously was a fairly long, fairly painful process, especially if you actually wanted to create true looking 3D motion where it grows over time and maintains that perspective. Well now it's very, very easy inside of CS6. I can take this DPX sequence that we have here, I can right click and I can choose to track camera. And much like several other processes in After Effects CS6, this is a background process. It's analyzing in the background, which of course means that I could go to other compositions or other applications and keep working and it's going to keep processing, all in an effort to really optimize and speed up the workflow when you're working in After Effects CS6. So once the analysis is done, what we're going to end up with are a series of 3D tracker points on top of the footage, which we can see here. So if I go ahead and play this back, let's go ahead and select the camera tracker effect here. Now you can see all of these points actually on the car. Now we have the ability to choose a series of points that really represent the plane that we want to parent our object or text to. So I can come over here and you'll notice that as I move my cursor around, you get this little target. We can adjust the target size. So let's shrink this down to around 23. And I can either have it select points for me or I can manually choose a series of points like this one here, this one here, and this one here. And that actually looks to be in pretty much the right perspective. So I can right click on this now where I have the option to create text in camera, create solid in camera, null in camera. I'm going to choose text. Go ahead and select my text. Modify the text. Let's go ahead and scale this down. And we'll just slightly modify our X rotation like this, scale it down a little bit more, like 
like that. And now you can see as I move through, it's attached to the hood of the car, it's maintaining perspective, and to take a look at the final version, again, this is a process that previously took a lot of time to do, and a lot of time to make it look good, to make it look convincing. Now with the new 3D camera tracker, it's a simple right-click operation, tracks the motion on your 2D footage, creates 3D tracker points, creates the camera, and allows you to create something that looks very realistic very, very quickly. Now the next thing that I want to cover deals with Illustrator integration, and it's long been a process when working with Illustrator files within After Effects that you had to go back to Illustrator to make even basic changes, things like fill and stroke width. Well now you can do this all inside of After Effects without ever leaving the app. So you'll see here that I have this basic Hot Wheels logo here, and if I right click on my AI file, I'm going to choose to create shapes from vector layer. So once I do that now, when you look up inside here, you'll see that we have the ability to modify the fill. So again, we can modify the fill if we want. Just go ahead and cancel out of that. We can modify the stroke. We can modify the stroke width. Okay, that's all cool. But you'll notice when I grab that, what do we now see? Oh, anchor points. You can actually grab the vertices now and modify this Illustrator file directly inside of After Effects without even going to Illustrator. This is cool and an incredible time saver. And again, just allows you to work in a way that you're very familiar with, but you can now do all of this directly inside of After Effects. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is working with extruded text and shapes. We're going to use the same basic example here to cover that. So once again, we have this, uh, this Illustrator file here. I'm going to twirl this down, and we're going to turn on 3D here. And let's go into some of our transform options. And we're just going to modify the X rotation. You can see now, if we also scroll down, that I've got a camera and some lights applied here. So as I modify the X and Y, you can see that it's being modified by the lights that are applied. Something like this. Now we can go down to our geometry options and twirl this down. And we can add something like a bevel, so we can begin to actually extrude this text. Let's go to, down to something like concave. Let's increase our bevel depth, something like that. Increase the extrusion depth. And what's also cool about this, you'll notice that if I come over here to the stroke width, it's still editable. So incredible power, incredible flexibility here. But here's the coolest thing. We have something new called the Ray Trace 3D Render Engine. Now, if you're familiar with using the previous Scanline Render Engine, you had a lot of flexibility there. But if you want to create truly photorealistic soft shadows and great depth of field blur, better light transmission, you're going to use this new 3D Ray Traced option. So I can come down to my previews here. I'm going to turn off the fast draft preview. Now we are truly using the ray trace 3D renderer. And I'm going to twirl down material options where I can add things like transparency and uh, really to recreate something that looks very cool, very new, very exciting. And if I come over to our final version here, just to give you an idea, using that same piece of footage, let's do once again a quick RAM preview on this. Now you'll actually see that that same Hot Wheels logo has transparency. You can see that the light is bleeding through there beautifully. We have all of these reflections. And this is all truly taking advantage of that 3D ray trace rendering engine. Very, very cool. All right, moving on. So, rolling shutter. Now, in the previous version of After Effects, we introduced the warp stabilizer effect, which is ideal for working with DSLR or any kind of handheld footage to create the effect of having it being shot on a dolly or having been shot on a dolly or a track just to stabilize. And we introduced rolling shutter repair. Rolling shutter artifacts are a common problem of working with DSLRs. Well, now we have a standalone rolling shutter effect inside of After Effects that is literally just like its predecessor, drag and drop, and it works very quickly. So if you take a look at the footage here, what you'll see is that on this car that we have here, as the camera was panning across uh, the back of this car, you can really see it on the Hot Wheels license plate. It just appears, well, bent. And if I kind of drag and scrub over here, you can really see that this right here, it just looks skewed. It shouldn't look like that. It should look straight. So again, making it very easy for you, I can go to Effects and Presets, Rolling Shutter, drag and drop right on our footage, go into our effects controls here, readjust our rolling shutter rate. Let's just take this to around 62%. Again, you've got options here for scan direction, different methods. So here is the before, a little skewed. Here's the after, repaired. And what you'll see again very quickly is that we took that footage that previously suffered from rolling shutter artifacts and fixed it with one simple drag and drop operation. Really cool, and once again, showcasing the incredible power of After Effects CS6. 
Now, when you talk about time-saving applications, uh, this next feature really speaks directly to that, and it's basically the addition of variable mask feathering. Now, you've always had the ability to actually modify uh, a feathered soft edge to a mask shape, but the width of the feather was the same around the entire mask. So what we have in this example is we've got a car and we have a shadow. And in this first example here, we've got two masks, one with minimal feathering to define the outline of the car, and the other with a generous horizontal feather to capture the shadow in front of the car. Well, with the new variable width mask feathering, we can do all of this with one uh, simple mask. So let's go ahead and twirl this down here. Select this one. Now you can see that we actually have one mask. You can see that you've got controls here to adjust the actual width of the feather. And this is all done in one simple process. Really easy and just, again, a great time saver. Okay, now continuing on with some additions that we've added. Psycore effects inside of After Effects CS6 are now all 32-bit, which of course means that you can use this with all of your greater than 8-bit footage, better looking footage, better looking effects processing. And lastly, continuing on with some integration with other new features inside of CS6, speed grade LUTs. Now, in the previous version of After Effects, we introduced the ability to look up tables and actually bring LUTs directly into After Effects and apply them to your footage. Well, now that Adobe Speed Grade is part of Production Premium, you can, of course, bring in .look files directly into After Effects as well. So in the footage that we have here, you can see that we've got this kind of flat looking piece with the car. And I wanted to bring in some specific looks that were created for me uh, to apply to this footage. So I can go over to Effects and Presets. We're going to pull up the same LUT feature that we had, apply color LUT like this. And now we can choose a LUT file. You see we have a couple of different presets here. Let's go ahead and go to our film log grade dot look. And you'll notice that we can also still bring in 3DL, cube, and CSP files. Click open. It applies the LUT, RAM preview. And there it is, unbelievably fast, unbelievably quick. If you want to add a different LUT, a different look, let's go to something like a three strip, click OK, RAM preview, and it's done. Great new features, incredible performance, incredible enhancements to really speed up your workflow. Those are just some of the new things in the incredible After Effects CS6.